I'm probably not going to watch this whole thing because it is pretty fucking it's it's just them using the death of somebody to fucking push an agenda. Like I didn't I didn't stand for it when they were doing it with Floyd. I'm not going to stand for it when they're doing it with this guy. It is it's so fucking disgusting. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we have some sad news. I'm sure many of you already know that the mangaka behind Berserk has died uh, at age 54, far too young mm -hmm. uh, to pass away. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And really, I think what we're going to talk about more in this video is just how hard manga creators work in comparison to their Western counterparts and how I guess 30 seconds in we're not going to talk about this person that just died we're going to use his name to fucking whine about people we don't like it's not even a minute in if you're going to talk about this guy's death talk about his life and his accomplishments don't fucking use it to push an agenda especially after you did this right after he fucking died like, this is such a fucking ghoulish move on your part. It's disgusting. I guess you could argue for and against whether that or not that's good. Um, because in Japan, you know, they do put out more content. Um, they, they do tend to do better financially. Keep in mind, the only reason why they put out so much content is because they literally work their people to death. It's a big problem over there. They work until they die. They're not having enough children because their culture is so centered around working so much. That they're not going home and having babies. There are companies that have incentives to send their workers home to their wives. Because they're just not producing enough children over there. It's, it's, it's becoming a big fucking problem. Like, if it drops too much more, they're not going to have a sustainable population anymore. And then once the older generations start dying off, they're going to be fucked. This is not to be celebrated. This is to be, like, condemned and actively fought against. Also, they make more money because their economy isn't shit like ours. Like, if, uh, if an American went anywhere else in the world and did the same exact job at the same exact pace, they would be making more money. Like, you don't get paid anything in this fucking country for anything anymore. A lot of these creators, but uh, many of them have health issues and uh, unfortunately pass away at a young age due to overwork. Mm -hmm. uh, compare it to freelancers here in the States, and sometimes it's like pulling teeth to get them to do anything. Yeah, uh, yeah we, we have hired before, so we're speaking from experience. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that before we get into it. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 190,000 subs. Uh, thank you so much for the support. We're on our way to 200,000. I'm not sure what we're going to do at 200. Don't clap. You should be shamed. This is something to be shameful about. Thousand. I don't know. We got to get something cool. Quit. No. Take the world's longest vacation. No, we're not doing that. Yeah, we should. Uh, I don't know. We got to do something. We did something for a hundred thousand. We'll figure it out. I don't know. We got to do something. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm sure you guys have heard the news. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce his name. Kentaro uh, Miura, creator of best-selling manga Berserk, dies at age 54. Uh, very, very sad news. They had it in the Guardian. Uh, the manga is never going to finish, obviously, because oh. uh, he was so tied to it. The Japanese artist was best known for Berserk, which he wrote and drew. It launched in 1989 Gosh. and has been running ever since. I know it's a very long-running series. Set in a world inspired by medieval Europe, it follows the story of mercenary guts, etc., etc. Uh, his character designs were hugely influential on other comics and games, including Dynasty Warriors, Final Fantasy, and Dark Souls. On Thursday, thousands of fans gathered online to pay tribute to him, including a virtual memorial in Final Fantasy XIV. Um, very, very sad. So even, uh, well, here we have the Dark Horse Comics editor, Chris Warner, described Berserk as a harrowing dark fantasy of monumental depth, complexity, and audacity. Uh, you know, so they had a little bit of a, a, a eulogy for him. Even the Mary Sue. Uh, the Mary Sue did something talking about it, but pretty much everybody is talking about it because it is it is uh, shocking and sad. And um, this is the original tweet. And yeah, uh, so he's been writing manga since age 10, publishing stories for his classmates. It sounds familiar. Yeah, it does. Uh, Some people are, I guess, born to do it. Like you used to do, you used to sell little comic books in kindergarten for kids' lunch money. Oh, I did. I did. Yeah, yes. kindergarten, I did. <laughs> I, had a, I had a comic about a character. I think his name was Glucky. Is he comparing himself to someone much better than him? 
you're, you're not the same level. I had to go looking for your comic book when it was mentioned to me. It's not the same. He was like a, my Gumby OC. Oh, God. <laughs> but he was like a cross between Gumby and a Care Bear. Uh, <laughs> but was he white? Uh, no, he was actually Because I was pink. like, he was, and then he had the appropriate other colors. I think he was pink. Yes. He didn't have any legs. He just had, like, giant sneakers. Very 80s. He was a very 80s character. Sounds like a very 80s character. But I used to sell, yeah, I used to sell. Not even Chicken McNugget Kids. Like, he was based it on that It was, like, something. a puppet-looking thing. Yeah, I, I don't even I don't even know if I have. I, I know I've got a box full of drawings that my grandparents gave to me from when I was little. I don't know if they kept any of those, but I used to, yeah, I used to actually hand-draw comic books. How many how, copies did you have to make? Well, I, everyone was unique. It was kind of like an NFT. Oh. So for a quarter, you So you were ahead of the curve. You could have an original piece of me for I'm a sure quarter. There's none left. And, and if there was, it was probably worth a dollar nothing, now. Nothing. It's worth absolutely Well, you nothing. would pay. You'd pay. I'd pay a hundred bucks for one. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of curious now. I should Inflation. like shake down all my classmates. Then, of course, you know, we had super fruits. Oh, I forgot about super fruits. I was thinking of super fruits. Oh, really? I wasn't thinking about that. But yes, yes. But he wasn't selling them. No, Squid King had his own super fruits. See, that's again. He's gonna kill you for this. That's the uh, the difference between us. I was I was making stuff, and so I had a lemonade stand. I used to make stickers that didn't stick because I didn't have any way to make paper cut out sticky. So I'd roll up a ball of tape on the back of them and I'd put them in a, a pack and try to sell them to kids. Did they buy them? Yes. Because <laughs> I was a hell of a salesman. You didn't get in trouble for this. No, it was the 80s. We were all about capitalism. Well, I gotta tell you then. one, even earlier than that, my mom was student teaching, and all of a sudden she starts getting these phone calls on her phone from these kids, and they're asking for her. And here it turned out one of the kids, and my, who actually my parents know to this day, um, sold her uh, phone number to the other kids in the class because they, they, he just got the number and sold it around, and they bought it. And they're calling her on the phone. <laughs> I guess, I guess she's a teacher's aide then. She's a teacher's aide. It was a teacher's aide thing. When she, so this is back like in, in, the, in the 70s? See, kids were a lot more enterprising back then. Yeah, I used to make really, really shitty brownies and try to sell them out, out front in my house, like a bake sale. Now you need permits for that. Now you need See, permits. No, maybe it's not that like kids aren't as enterprising now. Maybe it's just they can't get away with it because you need permits for everything and taxes and everything else. So they just can't they can't do it like they used to. Plus, their parents just hand them money so they don't have to watch them. Yeah, I didn't so. see. I didn't get handed money. I had to. I worked my. I ass didn't off. either. I had to earn stuff. I, I did. Like my grandfather, he had a he had a garage, uh, you know, auto body shop, and he had me sanding cars. Five dollars a car. Sanding. God, so screwed. Sanding the car by hand. With a piece of sandpaper, like multiple pieces of sandpaper, because it had to be, you had to, you know, use oh, the yeah, finer sand. Down, yeah. yeah, so you start with the coarser sandpaper, and then oh, you your work hands your way are down. A mess. Anyway, yeah, they were. Back to what the point is. Uh, the we point can take is, any side detours, and people get mad about well, it. Well, that's no, that's why that's why our our show is is so entertaining. Um, <laughs> okay. Anyway. Invoke the man's name right after he died to push an agenda. And you had to go on a long fucking rant about your childhood. At least when I deviate from the source, it's to find factual information to go along with that source. Or anecdotal evidence from my past. But I don't go into such great lengths to explain every little detail. It's usually, hey... This happened. Now back to the story. This shit is fucked up. Like, you can't even show the littlest bit of respect for somebody. You have to stand on their corpse to push an agenda right when they died. And you can't even take that seriously. You have to take the piss out of that by telling long personal stories that have nothing to do with the source material outside you comparing yourself to an actual artist. Uh, they said his artistic drive followed him for the rest of his life, causing him to grow into the amazing artist who is responsible for Berserk. Well, let's just say, I think some people are just born to draw, and they, that's all they do. They had uh, 40 volumes of Berserk, 35 million copies sold worldwide. Oh. 35 million. Um, and it's going to go unfinished, you know. Um, so, uh, look, I actually I, I give the Mary Sue props for having a nice, respectful... You know, now you get to the comments and people are like, people are like, it was problematic. It's a problematic favorite. Uh, it's dark and violent. It's problematic. It's like, yeah, because 
Yeah. He he didn't say it was bad. He he praised the shit out of it. This person did. They praised it as great. They said it was like edgy crap in the beginning. Well, not crap, but it was like really edgy and dark for no apparent reason in the, in the early beginnings, which is fair enough. But then it got better as time went on, which is true. Most people don't disagree with this. But you read that one word, and it triggered you. Problematic favorite. Uh, it's dark and violent. It's problematic. It's like, yeah, uh, because, you know. Well, it's, it's for you, I guess. It's not for you. Um, but they- Apparently it is. They said they were a fan of the series. Anyway, here's, here's. Again, he didn't read it. He just saw the problematic thing and went, oh, okay, okay and just didn't bother to read the rest of it. Because that's what these idiots are. It's it's never there's no in, in nuance there's no contact no no it's just skin deep oh you said that one word I don't like so therefore you must be the bad. What happened? Supposedly he died from an aortic dissection. Now we're gonna get all medical okay. on you, and uh, again you know age fifty four that's that's too young. But yeah. uh, it just kind of happened, and a lot of times they said it comes from uh, high blood pressure, um, you know aortic valve defect maybe. Um, they said that, uh, you know, it could be smoking. I don't know if he smoked or not, but blood pressure, probably not being in the best of shape because a lot of these manga artists spend many, many hours sitting. Well, traumatic injury to your chest or like a car accident can cause it too. I mean, I'm not, that's yeah. not what happened here, but yeah, they, these poor guys, you know, what's something we run into, we have to, we might join the gym locally because again, because we sit all the time because between doing the videos and the 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 blogs we spend a lot of time sitting and it cannot be good for us and we need to get to get working out well they have uh they have desks now for and i i know that um a lot of office workers are using them actually the standing desks yeah i was debating about getting one actually yeah human beings are not meant to sit for eight to ten hours a day now another detour one of the very first office jobs i had i worked at a newspaper and uh my boss bucky not, Bucky not the Barnes. good kind of Bucky. Not the hot kind of Bucky. He was he was a World War II vet though. Uh, he was. Well, that's good. well, maybe it was the real Bucky. I, the wrong Bucky. I don't know. But um, he was a hard ass, and he was like, you worked at the newspaper. You were expected to be in your chair, save for your two ten minute pee breaks and your lunch break. You were in your seat working, and he literally spent his entire shift walking up and down the composing. Well, he department. got to be in good shape. Yeah, he got to walk all over the place. Up and down the aisles of the composing department, making sure everybody was working. Well, shouldn't he have been making sure things were done right and then making sure that he was editing and doing his job? He actually wasn't terribly good at his job. He was just uh-huh. very good at intimidating everybody else into doing their jobs. Well, Bucky is rather intimidating. Yeah, I don't think he's alive anymore. He probably. I doubt that. Uh, it's been a while. Anyway, um, yeah, so here's, here's what we really want to talk about here, and this is... These guys are very flippant about life and death. Like, they don't seem to, it doesn't seem to phase them whatsoever. This is very sad. And I don't know if he passed away due to overwork. If I had to guess, um, I would say that that probably factored into it. Because if you've ever followed Oda, the creator of One Piece, it's been talked about a lot that he works. I mean, he doesn't just work his ass off. He works his legs off. He works mm-hmm. his feet off. He works his arms off. Uh, he's worked his life away. He's he's wound up in the hospital multiple times due to stress and overwork. Now, this guy's worth hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars. So you could wrap it up. He could wrap it up. Yeah, he could. Uh, he could, you know, they, they could do a demon slayer and just be like, this is it. This is the beginning, middle, end of the story. I'm going to take a break and come back with another one. Just that image. I'm just, Twitter's reading right now. Just all the problematic parts of this image, but continue. Somebody call four kids. Fix it. Um, yeah, so, you know, the guys. They can't help themselves. They have to bitch every chance they get about every little thing. This is what's called projecting, and they do it a lot. It's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He could job it out, you know, uh, and I know that a lot of uh, successful manga artists do. Uh, I believe uh, Toriyama does. He has Bird Studio, and I think he jobs most of the work out now because he's getting up there. Um, I, I would, but he's, I guess, such a control freak that he has to make sure that he's got 
complete control over it. But he has been in the hospital multiple times, multiple times because of his work schedule. And we're going to talk about that. What is expected in Japan versus what's expected here in the U.S.? Um, they talk about being a, a living nightmare to be a manga artist. That you're signing up for voluntary enslavement. Mm-hmm, I believe it. I yeah. know much work goes into this stuff, so it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, I mean, you go to Oda's schedule, and this is his schedule right here. Yeah, we talked about this before. It's just yeah. nuts. And, and this is, I mean, he's, I think, in a different weight class than a lot of manga artists, but it is, you basically live to draw your comics. Uh, and it is do or die over there. If your comic doesn't take off, if it doesn't sell, you're done. And that might be your entire career. Like, th- this is all you plan to do with your life is make this comic and make it big doing this comic and uh, to the exclusion of, like, everything else. Like Now, he does book in a lot of time for sleep. I mean, not, like, a lot, but, like, he's got, you know, there, it looks like there's two hours here, but that's coming from Sunday when he did several here. So, I mean, he's sleeping, but I love there's three blo- blocks of free time. I cannot stress to you how much tr- how much truth to that there is. Um, we do, like, for us, for example, we do um, all these things, and we don't know what free time means. <laughs> We don't, we don't, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, we've been having this discussion more and more often. Imagine a world where you don't have to do this at all. If you don't want to, you don't have to worry about selling. You don't have to worry about creating. You don't have to do this. This is insane. This is like mental illness. Look at all this. This person should be seeking assistance. He should be seeking help. He should not be doing this to himself. This is how you die at age 30. This is like, he has three hours, and that's it. On one fucking day. And they're talking about like, oh, he's only got so many hours of sleep. Look at this. This is horrible. I've mentioned it before. I've worked 12-hour shifts seven days a week before, and that killed people. Like, they were dying in the fucking workroom, passing out. It was not good for your health. One guy had to be dragged out by a fucking... by a paramedic and a fucking cop because he just could not function anymore. Like, and this is this is that times a thousand. This is this is ridiculous. This shouldn't be... This should, this should not be anybody's schedule whatsoever. And they're praising this shit like it's something to be looked at and like, oh, this is amazing. Everybody, no, 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 no. Don't do this. Don't ever do this. Get enough sleep. You rest as much as you need. I don't care if you have all the pressure in the world. You fucking rest. Because I don't like seeing people break like that. It is fucking horrifying if you have ever seen it in your life. And how about just the, the, the number of hours between YouTube and and the blogs, and the comics, and the other stuff we're trying to get started, like, is seven days a week, Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm not telling people to do this, but this guy is at the top of his game, you know? And he probably, for him, he probably wants to stay at the top of his game, which is why he's burning the candle at both ends. But he's probably going to wind up, unfortunately, like the creator of Berserk one of these days, and not come out of the hospital. Uh, yeah, well, probably. And I'm just looking at this, and I'm, I'm hoping he does it. I mean, uh, is the dude married or something? Because well, I, mean, I can't imagine that this would go well. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, he th- has daughters, yeah. He has a daughter. So at some point, he had enough time to make a daughter, and he sees her one day a week. Uh, so I don't know if he's married or not, but um, I'm sure somebody does. But, yeah, he, uh, he does he – does, uh, make some time. <laughs> uh, he sleeps in his own studio without taking a shower. Ew. But he does hang he out. Gets with it done dog. though. See, that's what people don't understand. And we run into this all the time with these young creators. They want to do. They want to do all these things, and they're going to be the next big whatever. But they don't want to put the, the work in. And we see this over and over and over again. And it's really frustrating to people who've done the work, who put the hours in, to watch these people that just get get handed something because they know somebody or because they're the right checkbox or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they haven't actually... And then, then, then there's culture shock for them because, wait, I'm expected to work now? Yeah. Uh, you know, this is happening in American comics at a, a shocking rate. It used to be even back in the day, you know, Jack Kirby was penciling how many books a month. And 
he wasn't getting paid very well doing it but you know it takes so many hours to actually get really good at something to master something we've got people now getting book deals getting agents that have never actually drawn an entire graphic novel before mm -hmm. in fact you just found something yesterday that uh somebody is supposedly going to have the book pitched and it's like we know this person's never actually done they just do their own thing when they can and when and, they can. and it makes me mad though because we've actually hired freelancers a couple times because we'll get some help we need help and this is back when um neon was working a full-time job he'd come home and he'd work uh from like, he'd come home see the kids for a couple hours at that and then work until two in the morning to get up again at like really early in the morning to go back to work so we've we've probably seen him live this okay and we had little kids at the time and we hired some help we thought and what happened in both cases they're both in the same school i want to point out and it's and it's uh um scad mm. which you know no offense anybody's gone to scad but i have totally would not hire people from scad ever again because both times we've had people from SCAD, and both times there has been a huge sense of entitlement. We had people that had deadlines. Oh, yes, I can, we told them up front what we needed. Yes, yes, that's not a problem. We can do that. Um, and then they proceeded to not do things because, well, my head hurts today. Or, you know what? I wanted to go do fan art of, of Ninja Turtles, and I didn't feel like doing the work for you that I had told you I would do by a certain time. Yeah, we had this happen multiple, multiple occasions. And there are a lot of people who they want. You get what you pay for. And I guarantee you, you did not pay them a steady wage. I want to make it in comics, but they don't seem to understand like the amount of work that goes into it. They just want to be handed it. Yeah. And, you know, when we did the webcomic, when we did Shadow Binders as a webcomic, it was that was actually in addition to a full time day job mm -hmm. because the webcomic didn't pay very much. Mm. So. You know had to keep the money rolling in and draw the comic so what suffered was was sleep i usually would i would go downstairs with my daughter spend time with my daughter uh and we would go downstairs until probably two o'clock in the morning get up at six or seven in the morning to go to work and and that's how the stuff got done she was in the age where she didn't want to go to bed yeah um and, oh, it, yeah. and i and i was in there the whole time too it wasn't just like you know oh, no, I think, I'm not, yeah i'm not saying and, that, and i was saying. working um i was working and doing all the stuff at home and you know i would write the stories i yeah. promote i do social media i do everything else and i had to take care of two kids homework all that stuff um so it, it's it's not easy and a lot of times people are just by themselves like we were lucky enough to have two of us um and i helped color and do things like that so we, we had two of us so it was a bit easier in that regard but you see all these people come out and they're just like okay i got my degree i it's all gonna be handed to me now or you know i'm me so give me the gig and the, the one person even went and used uh neon's name because we found out later because uh neon had been doing stuff for a company they wanted to work at and used his name to get themselves a gig working there yeah. Um, and yeah. then didn't, wouldn't, do, wouldn't do the work for us. Oh, my God. We would hire freelance colorists, and they would, like, and we talk because, look, the whole purpose of hiring freelancers, in our case, was, like, you know, I'd rather pay the money to have that time back with my family, you know, and we'd pay these people, or we were going to pay these people, and they would just, like, disappear for days. I'm like, do, do you understand? We, we put a couple of pages out a week. We're hiring, like, we need, like, I can give you a couple days turnaround, or you tell me what the turnaround is, but you can't just like take the work and then disappear. Oh, and the one wouldn't release the pages until the, she got. Keep in mind here in the U.S., freelancers are basically contractors. They can work at their own schedule by law. If you want somebody who's there precisely when you want them, doing precisely what you want them, when you want them, you have to hire an employee. A freelancer isn't a dog. You can't call them. You have to have an employee. You have to pay them a salary, provide benefits. Put them on your taxes. When you hire a freelancer, they are working at their leisure, not yours. That is the point of hiring a freelancer. You don't have to go through a corporation or nothing. You just talk to them. You can sort it out yourself. But you have to understand, they are probably working several different projects at once, not just yours. I know it's annoying. But you have to understand, if you want somebody who is at your beck and call, who only does your work, who can focus solely upon your work and nobody else is and get it done right when it needs done because it sounds like you had yourself a very problem a very big problem with crunch you have to hire them as a full-time employee and yes of course they used your name it's called a reference i worked for this person here's his name everybody does it 
It's not some big fucking heinous plot to use you. To, it's, 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 a, it's a reference. They worked for you at some point. Yes, here's the work I did with him. Here's his name. And in case you need to get a hold of him and ask him how I did my job, which is probably a mistake on that guy's part because it sounds like you're a big fucking dick. She got paid. She wanted paid per page. Like, I was really scratching my head because the same person went to work for one of the publishers I worked for, and I had to chase them for four months to get paid. And, and I know they didn't pay as probably as well as we did. She got she got paid. She wanted paid per page. Like somebody who handles this kind of artwork. Is that unusual to be de wanting to be paid per page? Because I have talked to some fucking people about art before. That does not seem that uncommon. Yeah, you do the work. Here's the work. Can I get paid now? Please. That's how this works. You pay them for their work. Like, again, you hired a freelancer, not an employee. I was really scratching my head because the same person went to work for one of the publishers I worked for. And I had to chase them for four months to get paid. And, and I know they didn't pay as probably as well as we did. No, we paid more. We and, paid more. and yeah, so anyway, my point... I guarantee you they paid more. An actual publisher will pay more money than a couple of idiots on the internet. The reason why they go to people like you first is to get experience and have some references to point to, like, here's the work I did before. They don't go to you for money. They go to you basically for, like, exposure. They go on to actual publishers who will hire them as an employee and get paid regularly when they actually want to make money. That's how this works. Point is, you know what you're getting into. Um, if you really want to make it go, and especially if you get popular, it's if you get what you want, you're going to have to work more. Yeah, because there's always going to be somebody nipping at your heels. That's why they always say, you know, too, with, um, you know, with comics, um, as it is kind of a young person's game because i think when you're younger and you don't have family responsibilities you don't own a home uh you know you can take a chance and it's basically just you that it affects you know right a lot of people like their spouse works yeah their oh partner. yeah that's a whole nother um yep. you know their partner does the work goes to work and has a good job as a doctor i know one person who who was you know husband was paying for her to sit there and break into comics um, or they have a nurse or a teacher or something like that. that they're getting paid well so that they can just, you know, do comics all day. Aren't these two capitalists? Shouldn't they be praising them on their capitalistic adventures? Like, yeah, you found somebody to finance you on your business. That is capitalism 101. You should be praising these people, not whining about them. So when they're like full time, it doesn't necessarily mean they're full time. Um, we learned that a long time ago. My point is, you know... When you do this kind of job, you're going to be run ragged. It, mm -hmm. it goes to the territory because you have to bust ass to get there. And then after you get there, you have to work even harder to stay there. So you have to remember this going into it. And either you're going to have to have help or you're going to have to make that decision. Of, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. Um, nobody owes you anything. No one's going to hand it to you because you're you. You have to earn it for most people. Uh, I think Hollywood's learning when people don't earn it that it bites them in the ass. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing people being put in charge of multi-million dollar animated series like right out of college you know like the only other experience they've had is like maybe doing their own thing on tumblr, tumblr or usually tumblr yeah it's like that is a miles away from from being able to then they're like oh my god this is tumblr still relevant to anything anymore like this is two months old this isn't like years old tumblr hasn't been relevant since i was a fucking far writer like why are you talking about tumblr this is hard, and it's like, no shit. And then they start bitching on Twitter, or they start bitching about, like, I wish I didn't have to work retail. Like, you, you actually think this is easier? It's harder, and you got a lot of people, like, you, you screw up in this, it's like you're... Have they never worked retail before? I can tell you from experience, it's not fucking fun. It's not even experience. It counts for nothing. It's a nothing job. It doesn't count on a reference. It doesn't count on anything. It is worthless to you. That is the fucking point. It's so fucking stupid that they talk like this, and yet it's pretty fucking clear they have never worked an actual fucking job their entire goddamn lives. Like, I know he says he works and she says she was a teacher, but I'm calling bullshit on both those claims right fucking now. He definitely worked for a family member, and there's no fucking way she was a teacher for any school with any credibility. Your career's over. Mm -hmm. Like, if they think that you're a screw-up or you cost them millions of dollars or whatever... 
um, there's 40 other people waiting to take your place, or you're just not the flavor of the month anymore. You know, you might have got in because you were the in America, yeah, not true. in Japan, but in no, America. Japan, Japan, Japan. In Japan, if you have in Japan, people with your skin color get called names and denied services at stores because you're not Jap Japanese. Cops follow you around to make sure you're not in trouble and will arrest you for no reason. You will be thrown in jail for no reason, motherfucker. Which is why I'm pretty happy when these guys move, try and move there, because then they get treated like shit. And you would think it would teach them a little bit about how certain people are treated here in America, but no, they end up like Black Pigeon Speaks and just getting more fucking stupid over time. You have to, you have to prove it and you have to, you have to earn it. Yeah, um, Japan is very, very brutal. Now this actually, the uh, I thought this was Odo's. Cause they... Insert comment about World War II Japan here. Yeah, embedded into the article here, but it's actually another another oh, is it? Um, another manga artist, um, which they say in the fine print here. Um, this is for the yeah, Neuro Rise of the Yokai Clan, Shibashi Hiroshi. Oh, okay, that makes more sense because like he's on three hours sleep. Okay, I yeah, got his it. is scattered. Oda, um, Oda says some days he sleeps eight hours. No, that's the guy in the chart. Okay, but yeah, Oda's all over the place. Um, everybody's talked about how how hard he works. This is uh, the Naruto creator. Works 19 hours a day. 6 to 9, sleeps. 9 to, nine to 13 o'clock, never go on military time. Works. 13 to 14, lunch. 14 to 23, work. 23 to 24, dinner and bath. 24 to 30, work. Pretty much. I mean, this is crazy. This is mental illness. They need to do something about this shit. It, it's breaking their artists. Um, you don't need to put out 30 fucking issues in one week all right you can do it over time you could get ill from overworking and this could have possibly maybe been you know they haven't well, said for it's sure. happened before it has i mean this is a thing in japan you know this is everybody talks about the japanese work ethic which i agree it's 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 something we need more of i think here in the states but a lot of americans carry two jobs they work 12 hours a day seven days a week Americans are lazy. No. We're not. We work more than most other countries combined. I think there was one place that showed Americans work more than Canada, the UK, and fucking France put together in terms of work hours a week. Americans aren't lazy. We're depressed. We're overworked. We're underpaid. And if you look at the statistics, suicides are on the rise. We're not happy. Stuff needs to change now. You know, too much of a good thing, and, and you've got a lot of, I mean, you've got kids. And it's really hard when you're a creator, too, and everybody's like, we, we want more. They're demanding. They're getting rude with you. We had that happen. Where's our free? We aren't we getting our free. Why? Or even if they want to buy some, why is our book late? Why, why aren't we getting it now? It's like, well, because people like to live, have a life and have a little bit of downtime. You get tired. Like this one person said, lumbar compression fracture from bending over, working too much on Card yeah. Captor Sakura. I'm like. Yeah, this is a North Star creator. He's blind in one eye. Um, okay, so that's that's kind of a thing, too. Um, I don't know if it, if it's related to squinting over a desk but uh, I, you know, I used to color Don Rosa's work and Don Rosa had uh, detached retinas and I think it could have maybe possibly been from hunching over his desk because his work is so intricate and he has so many panels you know per page and so he's really squinting on the little details and stuff like that and you do that for 20 years day yeah, in, now day you out. can you can enlarge it and work but yeah, back then you and, couldn't yeah. so I mean I don't know there's just a lot of things and yeah. then the pay is not great. Yes, yes. The other day, yes. Yeah, because even, yeah, if you earn uh, $100 a page, uh, you draw 32 pages a month, that's $3,200 before taxes. In Japan, good luck living in Tokyo. Hey, well, you know what? Uh, but that's like it is here, too, with comics. Yeah. You know, pages often don't pay very well, the page rate, and they want it done. And you're like, you know, think about these comic people, um, the writers can write like a whole bunch of titles in the time it takes an artist to do the same the pages for one book yeah so they get to go out and hit, hop from pet, title 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 and get paid more and the meanwhile the artist is on one one stinking book and i think that this is why we've seen a shift in the last 
10 to 15 years in comics where the writers have become sort of the the superstars. It used to be that the artists were the superstars. And oh, by the way, this book is written by so-and-so. But it was always like everybody knew Todd McFarlane and Jim Lee. And, and now the writers have, and I think it's because they can do more. And I think they also have the time to go promote themselves mm -hmm. more or go hire a PR firm or something. You don't see artists doing that very often unless they're like a co-creator or something. Um, so it is. I mean, it's it's kind of, and people don't understand this is how it is in the animation industry too, that you might have a showrunner here in the U.S., but they, they send the work overseas and you've got people working these ridiculous hours for mm -hmm. ridiculous pay. And it's like, you know, I could write a, a page and the time it took me to explain the page out and I could probably write a whole book with this, I mean like, well, part of a book with this page and it would take me a couple hours maybe after I went through it a couple times and, you know, and it would take like neon, you know, hours to yeah. draw it. I mean, ours used to be like, what, 12 hours, 15 hours a page? Um, for shadow buyers, uh, yeah. I mean, I got to you got more simplified. You simplify stuff simplified more towards the end of end of the last book. But. Yeah, I got to a point where it's like I cannot put all the shading and all the whatever, and I, I did simplify things. That's why webtoons you see that they're talking more more close ups, more more talking, talking heads, panels, yeah. or just like this word balloons, because they're trying to get them out once a week, and it's and it's a lot. Yeah, and they said yeah, like uh, Oda's schedule starts at five and ends at two a.m. Uh, finishes are only necessary during busy times of the year. Uh, surely you'd have long holidays to make up for all those intense stretches of work. No, uh, he doesn't. This is a guy who's got $200 million and no time to spend it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's that's what's insane. Well, like we're it, nowhere near that, and I'm tired a lot. Yeah, it's. I mean, burnout's a real thing. And it's the same with YouTubers, too. I know, like, uh, PewDiePie had to take time off. I think Jack Jacksepticeye took time off because especially, uh, you know, gaming YouTubers... And if that's your living and the way that the algorithm is set up in YouTube, you basically have to work around the clock. You know, mm -hmm. you got to constantly have new content and it does become a grind. I mean, it does. I mean, and they said, yeah, vacations will cost you sorely. Um, this is uh, the creator of Bleach said he's faced with that whenever he manages to sneak away. He said, I heard you have to draw 19 pages every week and that you drew ahead so you could take a break to come to San Diego Comic-Con, which is more work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, have you done any drawing since you've been here? I worked really hard so I could take the time to come here. So, no, I haven't worked on any drawings since I've been here. Big smile. Like, thank God. We do that, too. We go when we go to Disney. Yeah. When we go to do Disney videos and work on our Disney end of, of things, we have to bank, either bank videos ahead. But since ours is more news-related and time-sensitive, we literally do the parks all day, come back to the hotel room at night, and have to make videos to put them up. And if we don't, we take a huge hit. So we have to do it. Yeah. It's um, like, it's, you know, I'm just letting people know, like, a lot of people want to do stuff. Well, are they comparing themselves to these people who actually do real work? Like, I'm sure it takes them time to draw their book. From what I hear, the art is about the only, like, really good thing about it. But why are they comparing going to a theme park to do a little story that not a lot of people care about anyway to somebody who is working themselves to death? stuff like these comics or things i'm not discouraging you i'm like for all, by all means go make what you want to make because i mean i love to see more and more great new stories i just want to make sure people understand that if you get your wish and you get to be big or you get what you want with that comes more work yeah um and that's one thing that i think you know the american comic book industry a lot of people who want to break in a lot of people who have just recently broken in they don't understand it and i think we're we're kind of seeing that in the results too of the books being put out, you know, and uh, cause you look at, you compare how comics were, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And those people back then were making ridiculous money. So it was worth, you know, putting the, the time in, but now it's like, they're not paying very much. So it's like, you get what you pay for, mm -hmm. you know, even working as an assistant, you're going to work more. Uh, you can't afford assistants to pick up the slack. You know? Yeah. I've been there. And if you do pay for it, they don't even do their job half the time. Yeah. Um, like, How have you been there before? You've done nothing but bitch about how people are lazy. This guy, uh, oh, Mazinger. Okay, so Mazinger Z, the artist I go and the guy, hired a special assistant just to draw military vehicles. But you, you can afford it. You know, they don't have the money or time to do so. That, so they get stressed out over deadlines. I know there are people that just draw buildings, just draw, mm -hmm. you know. And it's the same with the American comic book industry, Western comics. You've got inkers, uh, colorists, letterers. You know, it, it does take a production team or you can do it all yourself. 
and keep all the not money you're gonna make. Yep. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. And then there's this. This is what we're. Yeah, our kids complain all the time. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're. You basically. You live to work and work to live. Unfortunately, we have a computer. Second computer. <laughs> this is an old article. This is an old article. This has to be an old article. Because this is oh, not yeah, that's true. Not, this is, this is like, <laughs> like this is an old article. This is from two years ago. Yeah, this that's old because that that and that, now it's on the the it's, it's on the oh, upswing. Oh, twenty sixteen. Yeah, it's, it's on the upswing not. so much it's ridiculous. So yeah. Yeah. no, it's not. Again, it's about the same. It only looks like it's doing better over here in the states again because it's more accepted in the public eye to be into this stuff, whereas even five to six years ago, it was shunned very terribly. Like, there was kids in my school who were into this stuff. They would bring the little comic books into school, and sh they would get the shit kicked out of them. Boy, girl, doesn't matter. They got the shit kicked out of them because they were freaks. They looked at that weird foreign thing. We don't like that. They, they beat the shit out of them. That's not the case anymore. That's why the sales look like they're going up, but that's just the case here. Look at it worldwide, and it is declining slightly. There is a case to be made that, like, it's not doing as well as it used to be. And since, you know, artists over there don't care mostly about the American market, like, there has been legitimate interviews where they've said, like, if my, if this does not do well in Japan, I'm not going to send it to U.S. I don't care. Like, it's, this isn't even a secondary market for them. They don't care. In fact, there there have been canceled series that did very well here in the United States, but because it was not selling back there. It was canceled because this is not a big market. They don't consider it a big market. They don't care. Now, they're pushing this because, well, the comic book industry, which has always been political and always been very progressive, by the way, doesn't agree with them anymore because, well, it has too many black people in it now, too many vaginas in it now. Which is hilarious because if they had listened to Stan Lee... When he was talking about how he would draw comics today, they would realize how stupid they are. But no, I've done gone through like why anime and stuff's like it's not declining as bad as people think it was, but it's not exactly doing well. Yeah. Well, that's actually creating more problems because now there's so much demand, people can't keep up. So yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, it's not sad in news. Um, you know, it is kind of a gilded cage. It's, and I think we're gonna we're gonna hear about more manga creators, uh, unfortunately, passing away before their time. So, uh, I hope you appreciate the work they put out because it literally could be their. So they've gone on this whole big thing. They've only touched on this man, I think, two or three times. Why did you invoke his name? Why did you stand on this man's corpse? If you weren't going to talk about him in particular, why'd you bring it up? You could have just brought up the general thing, like, you know, these people are dying, they're overworking themselves. No, you actually had to go with somebody who had recently died. Like, I, I said this before, I said this at the start. I did not stand for it when BLM did it with George Floyd, because it was fucking ghoulish. Plastering his face everywhere, using his name for everything. It's okay to point at something, hey, this is fucked up. How do we fix this? But that is different than invoking someone's name, plastering them all over the place, and then using them to push an agenda, which is what you have done here. Y you should be shamed. And from what I've heard, you have been shamed a little bit, but it should be something that should be known by everybody who does business with you from this day going forward. You have been this ghoulish. You should not be worked with.